it's my pleasure to introduce my friend Le Lui. He's a staff scientist at the Department of Radiology and Imaging Sciences at NIH. And that he's collaborating with us is Emily Deveda together to open source an NIH dataset soon to release on Google Cloud. And uh, his research is focused on medical image understanding and semantic parsing to fit into new clinical practices, especially in the areas of prevent preventive early cancer detection, diagnosis, and developing novel precision imaging biomarkers via large-scale imaging protocols and statistical learning principles. He has worked on various core R&D problems in clonic polyp and along nodule uh, CD systems. And he used to work at Siemens as a senior staff scientist. He has been named on 18 US and international patents and served as a lot of conferences like CVPR and SIP, and he's hosting, hosting the third medical imaging workshop at this year's CVPR. Okay, please. Okay. Um, should I start? I'll... Sure, it's um, up to you. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I feel this way maybe it's more energy. Uh, so, so, uh, so the slide is a little bit like, say, um, I have been, this is the first version of it, and uh, uh, it's about two, one year ago, I gave a talk at GDC that uh, I tried to summarize what we do at the time. Uh, the medical imaging is booming, but it's not that much. But this year, just after a year, I really see a tremendous uh, interest everywhere. It's just a lot of things. Um, uh, so I keep on updating this. This is kind of a log. Um, it, I, my intention is not to cover all the detective detail, but talk about um, the problem we are working on, why we're working on, and how that will indicate clinically. You know, my job has a, I have the better side of my job is uh, uh, I'm flexible. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I have really a lot of freedom to do the thing I like to do. And I work, collaborate, I collaborate with uh, really the world best doctors, uh, especially Ron Summers. I think I believe he's one of the visionary doctors and uh, he understands contribution and uh, very well. And uh, I think I, he attended the uh, FIFA's uh, course while he was sabbatical, he was on sabbatical at Stanford. <laughs> a lot of these kind of connections, and uh, uh, sometimes I explain things to him. I, I feel sometimes he understands better than my manager in my previous company, even they have contribution PhD. In that sense, those doctors are amazing. They're they very smart and uh, they have a lot of insights. I think that helps us. You know, right now, for example, one thing I'm trying to consider is you know, how they were trained in the, uh, in the residence. How, how, how this big hospital they train, they can train successful, or uh, like a highly effective doctor. What is the curriculum? How, how are they doing that? How do they, they learn from either thing, start with harder thing, or do they, they do, uh, I have evidence they indeed do a hard nickel mining. So they have a book, this, this uh, big book, and uh, they talk about all the normal variations that simulate disease. So they, they were a, a doctor, um, you know, they can be uh, you know, a resident for maybe one year or two. They're starting to diagnose uh, different disease, then they learn that class, they, the brain company go blank. So they just don't know what they're going on. So because they really look similar, very, very similar to the pathology, but they are normal variations. So human has a lot of normal variations. The really long tail problem is <laughs> similar to autonomous driving, it's really long, it's a long tail uh, issues. And then after half a year from that, permanent mining, they actually begin to learn things even better. So they improve their permanent. So there's a, a lot of things I think we should be really pay attention to at least all these uh, big and successful uh, reputable medical institution, how they do things in that way. And I, I think the ways we're trying to see is how we can make their job easier, how we can make them more effective. Uh, they can care more patients better, faster, in a way. We, but we indeed have a lot of things to learn from them. They have hundreds of years of experience. Each hospital, they were sitting like in, in 18, some, 18 some years, something. It's more than 100 years old. So they, they have a lot of things. They have a treasure we um, should. Yeah, so uh, as said, as, um, the sum material is more for the general audience. Um, I guess from last year, I have to still convince people uh, say, you know, whether deep learning can be used or not. It, 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 it's a strong yes. Um, we did several things. We, we did work on those three lines. And uh, I think we show um, uh, like the statistical citizen progress compared with previous art. 
And uh, another thing I have to mention is that, uh, the deep learning work of deep learning is not necessary to solve all the problems better than before in in radiology even, but many, many. I'm trying to say, let's say, take example, like heart simulation. The previous, like the like active shift modeling with uh, boosting with hard features, all these, they, they can be very efficient, very, fi very fast. So not necessarily you will just be better. And uh, my focus is saying what we can do more, what we can do something which cannot be done before or with poor performance, but they're still yet very important clinical problem, how we can solve them better. So, so we are focusing on filling the gaps. So some very important problem they were understudied Difficulty cannot put into Carla, and uh, we want to put it into translational things. I, I, I when I was assuming we, we do like a similar running in a way, like uh, we, we are very much product focused. We, we do everything is for the product release. Uh, after half year, six months, nine months, we have a uh, deadline to release the product. So where my, I learned how to do product at Siemens and uh, to fit in R and D into Siemens, and we're still kind of running. We're trying to take the best. Of both words, so in essence, so um, so this is something uh, you know. By training, I'm a contribution person, uh, so I think this this thing uh, could be last forever. It's not no matter deep learning or not, and because this is not just deep learning. This is really, I feel for my life is uh, very useful, very powerful methodologies. I will always keep in mind, and this help really helps to build a robust product in, in my perspective. I, I can give a lot of example offline. Um, it's not saying I have to show a Microsoft CEO as Google Place. I, I have these <laughs> slides for, for a long time. Uh, I, I want to say is, uh, I want to emphasize this. So human and AI should work together, uh, especially with Docker. Once you really work with Docker, should you you know how amazing they are. And the, our job is really how to help them, how to make them more efficient, how to do all the dirty work for them. They can do diagnosis, reasoning, with less guessing, more work. Yeah, more uh, say uh, throughput in that sense. Um, so this this is my perspective. I have been keep updating what I'm trying to do, uh, thinking you know what's the really uh, something we can do. There have not been enough efforts yet. And, uh, so really, it's like uh, you have at the beginning think about how to build a human machine collaborative system. In Siemens, like a uh, uh, Four or five years ago, I think at the end of that time, I think that wasn't just beginning of the deep neural uh, network, not yet. I think at that time, Siemens really built the, the amazing product, even software wise. But it does not sell well it, 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 for many reasons. I think one of the reasons is really one of the performance is no deep learning. Some problem we don't reach the performance, uh, uh, performance barrier that can really introduce a new business model, a new. <laughs> Particle, new clinical particle. You have to introduce a new clinical particle that should be better and revolutionary, and uh, really they like it. Um, I, I really feel the missing link is that they're not interpretable. So doctor don't really know um, how you make this. In SVM, how you visualize SVM? A boosting, you have you know hundreds of thousands of features. You select them, and it's it's hard for them to know uh, in how machine was making this decision. So. The good doctor, good doctor really don't need a path, per se. Okay, so the good doctor is spending down time. It's just amazing. Well, you know, our brain is still very powerful. We, we do a lot of high level tasks much better than machine as now. The machine we have a lot of. I think we have a lot of algorithms to solve. We have a lot of challenges to solve. You know, when you push a machine to a limit, complex task, it, it is just miserable right now. I'm still it's promising, but it's still miserable. Um, of course, you can do certain things better than you know, right? Like face recognition. It, you know, because face recognition you only recognizes. 50 by 50 pixel, right? No matter where they are, you just match this 50 by 50 pixel. There's no much reason you need to do. Um, yeah, so so I'm all, I think this is also even maybe like a philosophy thing, uh, but you do need to keep in mind because they will the people pay to use your service or pay you to use your product, right? Um, so because they need to have a way to incorporate the machine intelligence with human intelligence. The preventive medicine, preventive medicine, mostly we are doing preventive medicine uh, before, especially in semen. Preventive medicine means normally, normally for early cancer detection. And uh, the, the many things, and uh, currently all the FD clearance protocol is a second rater because uh, it, it means like a doctor will first rate independently without seeing what the machine will produce. Then they take a second look on all the machine marks. 
And this causing problem, uh, at least before. And uh, why? Because uh, doctors spend a lot of time, doctors spending actually more time. So the insurance wise is more expensive because insurance, they, they, they need to charge insurance for that software, for, for the actual time they spend on reading text marker. But you're not saving that time, right? You are not. Um, and sometimes, if the permanence is not amazingly well, in terms of you, you consider sensitivity and also how many marks you pre the precision, you know, what in the direct impression, your software impression for doctor is uh, precision, right? Because if you miss, doctor actually don't know you, you missed, right? But doctor will see, say, oh, you give me 10 marks, only one or two are, are, are correct. And many other things, doctor can't even figure out what they are. And they can just get confusing little findings. And doctor don't really know how to deal with that. So they actually end up spending more time without really increase the throughput or, through, or increase the productivity. That's just a dead end. So, so, so we need to be very careful of doing repeat the, the failure. Um, we all, not just even the way all uh, occurred before. So we, we have to find a new way. We have to find a new innovative way to really bring value and really help uh, doctors. Even really not just doctors, really helping patients. Um, the precision medicine actually, um, I think the recent years, like recent two years, I get a lot of uh, more concrete ideas, concrete works were going along this line. I'm kind of like a, trying to balance more mm -hmm. from a preventive medicine, from CAD, or the kind of suggestion to precision medicine. The precision medicine, in my opinion, I think the low hanging fruit, the many low hanging fruits, and this is something doctor cannot do it now, but doctor need it. And right now they need to do a lot of guessing, and we'll fill in the gaps. So doctor mean, <coughs> means doctor reading the image, right? Say, oh, so he said, this, this guy is severe on certain disease. How severe it is? Because we human, we cannot produce quantitative measurement just like that, right? We don't know how much volume, or how many ML tissues was dead, how many ML tissues was infected. We don't know these kind of things. But we can, we can make, make machine can make deep learning, semantic sampling. We can produce all these biomarkers, we can all produce these attributes. We can color them in meta features and provide to human doctors. Right now, there's no such thing. Human, they need that. They know they need that. Right now, they use, they use some surrogate, an imperfect surrogate. But that's the best they can do. Say, for example, you detect a muscle disease. The muscle disease, you want to know how much muscle degenerated, how much muscle tends into fat. But how, how you measure, how much you want them, it's the same. But so right now, what they do, they find the doctor eyeball uh, slides. Uh, let's say you do MRI, eyeball slides on the leg. Okay, the doc good doctor know what's the reprinting slides. Bad doctor don't know, really know. So that's that's the difference. Then you do a lot of guessing and based on the appearance. So the 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 they find the slides. They contour the tissue, and then they get a man. Of course, this is two D. It's not three D. So they, they use that as a surrogate. But this is best they can do. They, they have no way to do better. But if you say you have a way, they can call you, <laughs> you can say they are reading from packs, right? Say you can compute all these kind of things from packs, and packs just give them all the attributes they need to fit it in the workflow. They know what they are doing. They, you know, the different imaging protocol was designed for different purpose of diagnosis or treatment plans. So actually they know, they know they, what they kind of thing they should compute. So the packs can actually call, let's say from Google Cloud or maybe whatever cloud. The packs company, they don't have the resource, they don't have the they don't have the development efforts, they can do that, right? Okay. But they need this. They are the, quick request. You might want to explain what PAX means because yeah, most okay. of the people are not uh, medical. Okay, so PAX is right? kind of like a, a PAX is a picture archiving and the communication system. So it means like a, uh, all the images you down from a scanner, no matter Siemens scanner, Philips scanner, G scan, all the scanner, they, they flow in a center, center data format. And uh, they have many different kind of like a PAX company. They, 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 they have a standard, right? So they can take into the data from all the scanners, so they store it, then they present this to the doctors. So they are the machine and human interface, basically. So all doctors, you're reading from PACS. The PACS will be push the data to the doctor's screen, and doctor will read it, right? So if you can just say you're archiving it, and the, our hospital runs, we, we diagnose the patient on the day, it's the same day, right? So you, the PACS is really the intermediate thing. You can do a lot of fancy things, right? So you can say, oh, this guy has a brain macro leading, so he should be see the, he should be on the queue very quick to call alert. The uh, you know uh, some kind of like we, they call the 
a significant clinical findings. That means you need to call the physician, the radiologist finding it, you, need, you need to call the physician, the main treatment physician right away, because that's life saving. They, they are maybe it's kind of how kind of you call down the line in that sense, right? So all these things you can you can really inject a lot of intelligence, a lot of computational intelligence, a lot of computational things into PACS. Of course, you have to deal with PACS, eh? provide them API. The PACS will be the, you make PACS more AI rise or something like that, you know. Uh, so it's a lot of things you can do. Um, of course, we, we this really call it, they call it remaking biomarker, means it's an indicator. So they read unstructured data, they convert it into an attribute, a static attribute, not only is a scale, it's a scalar or maybe a vector or something. But it's a human interpretable. Human know what's going on, what this number means. And they, they don't have this number, they have guesses number. And you give this them this number, I, I'm sure they will be useful. But you need, still need to do, you need to work with Docker to invent a new clinical protocol to see really that efficient or not. So this is a new protocol that should be provided to the other rest of the world, the other hospitals. In our hospital is doing actually do a new protocol, a new new a new um, new studies. You know, we are kind of like a the last resort for some kind of patient. So we, we half our patient are cancer patient. We, we work with NCI very closely. Um, yeah, we, we, we're basically finding normal ways of finding and treating patients in that sense to save lives. And, uh, you know, for example, the, the chemotherapy, one of the most important chemotherapy was actually, was actually uh, invented in my hospital. And, you know, it's not really with me, but it was there. And we have a wall of all the people doing some kind of medical significant award. Uh, this next to the Nobel Prize, but Nobel Prize don't really have a medicine. It's, it's a more like fundamental science, right? Well, have 30 people the, in over these years, also the the heart and lung machine. You know, right now it's amazing. You can take the patient heart out and uh, do something using a heart and lung machine to make it still functioning because when the heart beeping is already got to the many surgery. So all this, the many medicine breakthroughs, like, uh, so medicine is an amazing work and uh, I could imagine like if we, the more IT things and more uh, AI things can be used, that really can, can uh, reshape the landscape. <clears throat> so this is, I don't think this is something I want to do, but I don't have a, I haven't done yet. Um, I, I feel it's very useful is uh, patient level uh, symmetry choice. That would be very useful for personalized, personalized study, personalized treatment. We are running all the cancer, take eye cancer as the example, because all cancer patient are unit. You say they have a lymph node cancer. US has about 60K patient every year, but there are 600 subtypes. I mean, each subtype is only 100 something. You always have long table things, they're always personalized. And this is across US, right? And if you can make thing, everything indexable, retrievable, say, oh, this is a new patient, and they have to try ABC to see if it works or not. But if, in some way, you have a magical way you can match them to the database, so someone they will successfully trade. I use that treatment as a kind of like a, you transfer learning, right? You find this is the closest uh, population, subpopulation of patient. How we learn information from there? This is not women can do. Women cannot do it now. This thing, I, mean, I talk. I don't think we should so, just do women doing. Yeah, actually, I want to dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. for this uh, precision medicine part because this mm -hmm. is sort of. Um, I have huge interest in that. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have time for a question, or we should save I prefer questions? maybe. Uh, uh, yeah. I have a I mean, lot of slides. Yeah, idea. I have a lot yeah. of slides to cover. Yeah. So, um, is the thing. My personal, I work on cancer in the last eleven years, almost eleven years, and uh, I work on lung cancer, colon cancer, the most common cancer, especially in in siblings. I also work uh, on colon cancer a little bit, but I put a lot of effort on the pancreatic disease because that's a really uh, understudied problem. Very. The, a lot of missing things there. They're very deadly, actually. Um, I never worked on breast cancer. Um, that's not my interest. And uh, it could be, but uh, you know, I only have one life. So. Um, uh, also, our group, we actually do a lot of prostate cancer. So we do a lot of things. We actually transfer some part into a, into a prostate cancer, uh, a CAS system. They do multi-user study. And I think I actually is one, also one of the leading uh, leading institute doing the prostate cancer, so it actually does have a solution. Um, okay, so another thing, you know, I'm I'm training, I'm by training computation, so uh, I always think things from a computation perspective. I think that helps actually. Uh, I, I consider medical imaging is a subcategory of of uh, computation, uh, the philosophy wise. Uh, the many things you can learn, but of course that's going to be different. But um, it's just I'm trying to repeat. That's three. Yeah, also three key problem, right? 
you want to three parent the three key parts detection, segmentation, <laughs> and the text mining and the image caption. All the, the interface of text and image this is really exactly the same. And uh, I don't want to go through, but I already talked about you know, each category, what you can do. And I, in recent a year, we, we started work at two years, but recently we maybe make a head of it. And this is a two database we share with you guys, and after you get to share to the public. Um, I really feel this is this this is a uh, uh, holy girl. Uh, uh, you consider, you know, we we have a hospital, middle size. Um, we have really great doctors. Our packs and risk risk is where the radiology information system. So this basically record what the doctor was writing the reports, right? So we have about one million, one million, highly. Um, I, I think they're high quality, very high quality reports. And you, you, you count it, it's about uh, 200 years doctors clinical work there, right? And they are the world best doctors. And the, some bigger hospitals, maybe Stanford, they have 1,000 years, they have 2,000 years. Because they, they, they just have more patients. Uh, we are small, we, we, are, we treat patients for free, basically. So Stanford has 4.4 million uh, studies. We have about 1 million studies, and John Hopkins has 7 million 12 years ago. I don't know what's the exact number. So I'm GH, they have a lot. The, the lot of doctors' clinical work. So basically, I see it's a treasure. There's really how we make way. Um, uh, we can understand better how doctor was doing the understanding. They already did that. We don't need to repeat the work. We cannot, right? So the, there are a lot of knowledge in there. How we can get them and use them to teach computers to do better work, to do deeper ontology. That, you know, all these kind of this. This is the fundamental bricks we should be. Um, I think really what we have done so far is a baby step, uh, but we're, we're heading toward that direction. And, and before that, not many people are doing that because, you know, many, many hospitals, um, you know, they have great physicians, but we don't have people really understand conservation <laughs> per se. We don't have people know how to build product. We don't have, we don't have way of really understanding what's AI. And uh, I think uh, AI has some advantage by, by many chance to so have we have everything, so we, we can start doing things like that, um, unfortunately enough. Uh, okay, so now I give you an example. You know, when you work with doctor, you need to show the results. The arm, they don't believe you. So, <laughs> so I give you a lot of pictures. Um, for me, it's too hard to detect all these kind of things. You know, I work on hard, I, I'm working on hard things. The, the lymph node, you need to swallow lymph node. Why lymph node is so important? Lymph node is uh, very performance, and we have really make big, big progress. I think I'm at something if we are only working on two or three years, that should reach a permanent level. We can we can have a new product. We can have a new product in that sense. Um, you know, I'm still very much like the product driven thinking. I, I worked in Microsoft and uh, Siemens for uh, altogether for eighty years. So Siemens really changed my thinking. I, I like the way they were pushing things to work to. Product, so that that's really can be, can be delivered. Um, yes, so that swallow lymph node. I, I won't be able to detect it. The doctor did a lot of visiting. Doctor found uh, maybe maybe uh, vessel, maybe something. Then they, they feel this blob. They have uh, um, some kind of very flexible hair order atlas or something to fit in. I don't think uh, any deep learning. You just run the three D and you will find them because. Um, there's a lot of reasoning there. I, 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 just, I just think that our current neural networks to have a lot of limitations. The algorithms, we have a lot of limitations. We, we won't be able to do that yet. Okay? So there's the, the something uh, going there. Um, but this is all very important because this is one of the most important biomarkers for, for cancer patients. You basically want to know how much lymph node volume this patient has. You, 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 with the best, you can track them over time. Because this fluctuation actually indicates how the drug active. Right, because cancer patient, you try plan A. You want to see if plan A works or not, and you need to find out as early as possible. Right, you wait, you wait to see if the patient gets uh, thinner or, or something. They have a way, maybe blood or something. They have a way to identify if the A plan is working or not. If it doesn't work, what that means? How what's, what should be plan B? What's the best to be plan A? All these kind of things. They need to plan all these kind of things. So this can be one of the very important biomarkers. I, I actually, we actually have a, a physician, his whole life is working on lymph node management, just lymph node management, and, and how that indicates all kind of different disease treatment, disease diagnosis. 
So this is very important, and this, I don't think doctor can do it. And uh, so basically they need is a whole volume measurement about how much lymph node this patient has over time. But of course, first you need to detect that. And then you need to check that, right? So uh, i just show you like, a, you know, this, this is where it already works. This is not really anything to be art, but just think, you have to think out of the box. So before, you know, you know Siemens used a lot of previous 3D art with Siemens. And Siemens did a lot of work based on 3D hard features and uh, eight boost and uh, random mm -hmm. for this kind of uh, aggregating. It's one layer, it's just one, there's no cascade, it's one thing. And right now, say we have a cascade. We have a, whatever method it is, we have a, a kind of generator. So we basically rule out 99.9% .9 of the volume of local regions, we get rid of them, we find the other special regions, and then we do a very simple thing. We do just do like aggregation, like uh, this was using hug. I just use, even hug, I think it's 2D hug. If you use it well, it, it can still beat the eight boosting and the rainforest with 3D hard periods, those kind of fancy things by a large margin, really by a large margin. So you have to think right, the complexity and the decomposition. The, this is really power, de uh, decompositional, critical, visual representation that should be embedded wherever you can to achieve robustness and generality for, for building a product or for building a high-performance recognition system. So this thing, this shows like, a, you know, if in conversation, nothing new, but what Mikai is kind of proves the concept saying, you know, this thing is when you have no contour, the human, when they recognize it, they, they have explicit, maybe human learn, the doctor, they learn the contrast of the contour. So here is your, if we have a contour detection system, if I integrate that into the CAD, will that improve better? Of course, now you can do everything in deep learning, but um, but still, but still, let's say you can do better. And uh, also, this is like a divided counter. So when you build a product, you need a lot of things to take care of. You really need to like a, a layout where you're fitting models and how you fix it, right? This is saying, you know, we have one of the interesting part of CAD is CAD is designed to find all these like a sub uh, uh, actionable lesions. Or something they can have big tumors, really big humongous tumors, and CASIM did not detect that. For computation, it's easy because we understand the new sample because the people is dependent on people population. We're doing this for screening, so there are maybe in your training data maybe only one or two or three, maybe you have you are lucky dozen of tumors, and tumors are humongous. For human, it's very easy to see it. But it's very difficult for even to capture it because it's so complex. It's a big tumor in homogeneous regions. How how you learn them? You, you have no, and you it's a long tail. In that sense, so it's the more important, but it's a long tail because most of the thing you see is a subtle, it's subtle thing. You want you really focus on detecting a subtle thing, but you detect this tumor. It's obvious for human doctor. Human doctor will say, "What the heck you are doing? Uh, how they build can't trust in you? They don't even know what you were." So also how you know just say, they will say. I, I don't know how to use that, right? You, 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 have no, you, you don't build confidence with that. So this is something you have to think about it. You have to think about how you make them happy. They are customers. Uh, you make them happy, you will make the patient happy. We have to make them, are, you know, are, we're supposed to help them. That, that's our only goal. And of course, you know, we show this by simple gating, like a hard gating or soft gating. You build, just build a branch system and you can sell this thing much better. Say so this is a very big, I have no idea to detect, by the way, okay, this is doctor's um, click. Um, this was a miss by the previous um, system, but uh, just we have a gating, we, we can get it back. Um, so then, you know, this is end of 2013, uh, you know, uh, yes, this, this is 11 uh, November 2013, after we're getting here. So we try, at that time, the ma major challenge is, uh, a lot of people believe neural network can be used for medical imaging because we say the medical imaging is a big problem is okay, we have uh, maybe 10 patients, 20 patients, 100 patients. We have no enough data, right? Well, we cannot do it. So um, this again is from, I, I was inspired by the work in conversation at the time called the detected by detections. Means like uh, you, do, you don't do the high, high range uh, at the uh, 3D directly do a detection, but you do a lot of like a 2D detections that are they're, they're noise, they're noisy. They're random, but you do 100 guesses, right? The positive, the positive, the positive sample maybe give you 50 of them are positive, but the negative give you a really low number, maybe only 10 or less than 10. They're all noisy, but you aggregate this noisy, aggregating these noisy decisions, and they're clearly statistically separable. So you don't need to make a perfection at the beginning, at the low end, you cannot. 
So just don't do that and, and just aggregate. I, I do think human has hierarchical reasoning that maybe much higher than just two or three, right? Just again, it's a hierarchy and the you know, hierarchy, I'm talking maybe in sense of how those categories, how this class label, how they are connected, how, you know, there are a lot of things. But, um, you know, say, you know, I don't want to repeat those numbers, um, they're, they're always changing. Another thing that we found is the, the neural network indeed sometimes works better because the neural network is more capable um, in terms of modeling things. Um, we can train, uh, you know, in previous um, papers, they all talk about a customized uh, test system for A category and B category. And we found in Samsung, we actually can uh, leveraging on both sides. So this is contradictory to what I've just presented about the branching or gating. So sometimes, I, I do think some philosophy in computer they are self congregating in some sense. So, so you have to think about how to use them wisely and how to fit in your, your thing. Of course, everything is, should be statistically calibrated, validated. So um, this just shows how human doctors do. Um, this is not my data, it's, it's really, uh, let me see, yeah. So human doctors has uh, lower sensitivity about repeating they have been seen. So uh, this is Siemens work that was a previous uh, street art. So they basically ask a, a physician uh, did the detection uh, first time, then a month later. So the physician is able to find uh, 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 about 15, 3% of the funding he used to find. It's just after a month, he forgot, right? He redo it. But he, but the human dog has a really low false positive rate. So Popakuna does now tends to be it can missing things, but they don't normally um, give a lot of false partners. So, so this is saying that it's complicated. When you build a product, it's complicated, but this thing this is a typical statistics like that. So also we act in this. Um, another thing is uh, you know this some this will actually uh, um, get a lot of statisticians about um, about um, 150, 160 in, in two years. You know, it's not comparable to CPR, but CPR is three, four times bigger than the Thai. And uh, uh, it inspired a lot of people. Uh, actually, a lot of people trying to see, oh, oh this is really a detecting by detecting, not, because meta is 3D. So sometimes it's not, it just shows it's not always optimal to do just everything directly from 3D. It can be 2.5D, 2D, and uh, a flexible collection aggregation, all this kind of, uh, fuzzy statistic, you can get something better just than just plain 3D. Um, this actually a lot of people, a lot of, we, we inspire a lot of papers, a lot of people doing that. This is one of the new things we introduced to the, from an academic perspective. Um, another thing at the time people feel is, oh, um, you know, is uh, like EMAT useful or not for medical imaging and, and how, and uh, you know, that, that's also, at that time, a lot of people, they use neural network, but the very small scale, like a, uh, the very small neural network. They're not really big neural network. They're kind of like as big as uh, uh, the CFARnet, as big as that. that. So Hu Chang did a lot of uh, investigation on XNet, Google Net. Of course, it's a lot of investigation on how to use Uninet, whether you, you, which condition you know, would be helpful or not. But this work was done like two years ago. You know, right now it seems like otherwise, but um, at that time, it's, it's a, a lot of things, and uh, you know, we, we always keep in mind, and, you know, because computer vision is really empowered by by immunized pre-trained models, right? So for many specialized tasks, you cannot train from scratch; you get nothing. You get crappy things. Um, you have to start from somewhere, and uh, of course, this is different. But we also show you have to fine tune it. You have to fine tune it, uh, maybe smart differently. Uh, if you some people, some computer, some machine, medical people for long. They just use Uninet pre-trained model. They don't fine tune it. They just use Uninet as a feature tractor. Then they plug in a, a SVM or something uh, to classify. Uh, but we, we do we do show consistently. You do fine tuning, you will get better. And uh, the later things uh, actually, when you have a lot of data in medical, and uh, you're starting from Uninet pre-trained model or you're starting training from scratch, you end up getting similar performance. But the Uninet model will get you convert much faster. Maybe I mean with less. With about half, half iteration you will need, like half number of iteration you will need, and of course this is really transferable. And, and this curve, is, by the way, is the best curve I ever produced in my life. <laughs> uh, and you know, in Siemens, everything we do is we push this curve to the 
left upper corner. That's what we do every year for six years. And uh, I don't think this curve is perfect grid yet, but it's it's really the, the best curve I in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we we just plug in Ron's data ten years ago. That was a DOD trial. You know, also another thing you can think about is the DOD trial, DOD, the way A. Because whenever they have a more advanced style, they first use for uh, the heroes, right? For the veterans, because they deserve a lot of treatment. You know, uh, my institute, my actually is next to the uh, Walter Reed um, National Military Medical Center. So um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can make it way more efficient. You can treat the heroes better. And with there's a lot of things, there's really tremendous opportunities, a financial interest, or something like that. To, um, to really, you know, it's amazing. It, it's an exciting year to make a difference. Okay. <clears throat> so right now, this is not my work. This is my colleague's work. I'm a co-author. Provides some consulting ideas or something. Um, we, we go even further. So this is we're trying to do all detect all the plaques in our body, all the plaques in our body. So this is because we have a, a you know, yes, we have a lot of people they are overweight. And uh, how, what's the factor that we have a heart attack? So you have to do, um, you basically need to, this is a heart plaque, but you have to do soft plaque, but right now it's not, po not possible to do soft plaque yet. But you can compute a risk factor, basically. If you can detect all those human doctors, right now, they don't do it. They, they just don't do it. Uh, and it's, it's hard, because blood vessels can be everywhere. Let me look around. Something difficult is muscle, fat, bone, muscle. because they are everywhere. They're not a, a coherent organ there. You just look They're everywhere. They can be have disease everywhere. So you just um, I mean, this somewhere um, maybe you can have a risk factor. You know, when they have an exam, uh, you know how you manage the diet. You can do a lot of preventive and precision medicine there. So there's really a lot of things, and and. Uh, you know, we are not that big academic group, so we can do things. We have to select a few things to really push it forward. But this is one of the things, uh, not my work, but it is exciting, I think. Uh, you know, also, this is, you have to segment this iota plaque. So you have to segment without clicking, without the leaking to the bone. Because you need to estimate how many calcium, the heart plaque there, what's the volume of that? Because that, the, the, the volume of plaque directly indicate with some kind of Fact, risk factor of the heart disease and other things like stroke, right? right? And uh, it's something which we detect the bow uh, inflammation, bow uh, dirty. I, I work on. I was mostly working on colon cancer detection in Siemens, actually. Uh, uh, you know, right now everyone working on lung, but colon is more difficult. Right? Okay, so lung detection is, in my opinion, is more one of the easier problems. The but you have a, the patient can have many lung, um, many uh, inflammations. All these kinds of things are important because for the cancer patient, you will know if they have inflammation. You inject something, and and I, I risk, there are a lot of things you can do, like a brain inflammation. When they when they cut the patient, when they do the surgery, do you have inflammation? Or do this is inflammation swallow, or is something working, something not working? Or this is cancer, or this is inflammation, this is infection. All these things you can. Doctor will not do it. They don't have a way to do it. They cannot examine every pixel. They won't. They have no time. They have no resource. So right now, they just ignore it. That's the best protocol you can have. And just imagine you have a way to do all this kind of thing. You can really have a new way. You can really have a precision medicine diagnosis, maybe at the same time or even less time. So you have more throughput. You have more information about the patient. You really can do a lot of things, more things than that. I would say, is, I, I think. Deep learning indeed give a way to detect undetectables previously. And uh, a lot of things can be done. But really keep in mind, like, uh, you always keep <coughs> fitting into the real clinic. I, I just learned from Jason talk yesterday, the plenary talk yesterday, like from GDC, the one of the thing he learned from the, the Toyota was saying, you have to go to the source to see what's going on in order to decide how to help them. You have to do that. It's a respect. You don't, you don't even know what they're doing and how you know what best would help them. This, I just give a reference, but nothing fancy there. Um, I was saying, I want to repeat something. It's, um, it's a million news. There's really a lot of interest. Um, I, I like this way. 
I think the, the industry, in my opinion, this is only the best way. This is only probably only way that will work. It's really the uh, the industry and the clean and the hospitals that should really work shoulder or shoulder. That's no other way to make it work. Because you because you present, you want to change the protocol, you want to give the new protocol. You need them to know, give you feedback right away. You know, IBM deporting people in the hospital doing things, you know, the strategy is right. Whether they, they can escalate the different strategies, not the, the scope of this topic or this talk, but that's really the only way. That, that, there's no other way around. You cannot get rid of this medical institution. You have a tremendous amount of intelligence there. You, you won't. You, you, don't, you, are, you have no way to, you, if you feel they are not doing something right, you just don't understand. You just don't know what they're doing. Um, I say is the first reader has a lot of issues. This is what we are currently working on. Everyone is not only really working on. Uh, I think we have to be smart. It's like what problem to solve. I would say the check survey may be one of the important problems to solve. In that sense, this is why we select check survey for some reason. And also, the first I, I really think that something will fly is the first reader, but we're not ready yet. I, I don't think we're ready yet. But my goal, this is my, it's well my, uh, well my thing. I want to. Um, uh, Make it real. Maybe before I retire, uh, really building a, a magical machine that can train the patient and can really. Um, right now, is really uh, um, many of the like, like Medicare. They, they don't do that. Even the American Cancer Association, they recommend you do this kind of exam to to screen the cancer. You, you just cannot afford to do that because uh, there are a lot of consequences, a lot of effort, a lot of cost. Not the cost and benefit factor are not that obvious. Right? You always have a risk. But the cost and the benefits is not so is not the dominant enough. You should do that, right? So, so the really is bring the cost down, bring the cost down, bring the productivity up, right? Human doctor right now the best human doctor, I do believe they can do the triage, they can do the triage. Yeah, sorry, 20, 30 major disease, they have no problem doing that. But we do not have a machine that can do that. We have too many false problems. And you ask the machine to examine all the one hundred slides, oh no, one hundred, five hundred slides, one hundred, one thousand slides. Just trying to screen one disease, you you will see how many false positives you, you generate, and you ask them to do thirty times. Right? You need a multi-purpose thing to do that. A lot of fundamental changes need to be done there, uh, but I think that's the way. We get that done. We really significantly improve the, the human health. Uh, so we are looking for partners doing all that line. That's a little bit long shot, but but I think we need to do that uh, and. Uh, also, the big data should be fit into it. We should build a multi-purpose thing starting from scratch, and even building ontology, everything. That, that, that's that's the goal. Because you you kind of building a triage. The healthy patient will not healthy population will not be bothered. But some patient you, you find them where you say, oh, you need to see this doctor. You is this this risk factor. But you don't want really causing like a social thing. Right? If you have too many problems, you just scare people. You just scare people at the ads or something like that. It's just there's a lot of social consequence, right? Um, yes, so I, this is my passion. Well, my passion, I think this should be done. And uh, it's hard, but it, it's making life more interesting, I think. Uh, <clears throat> it's just it really is just too many folks right now, given, you know, you, you look at the, the current, the last year, the, the Microsoft Cocoa and uh, challenge, and you, you see the start of the was from Google and by how long they did that. I, I, I think that problem is still far away from really being useful for triage. So it's a good thing, you know. You're, you're targeting very broad triage, like you know. Um, it, it can be defined by him. I mean, the more typical right now, mm -hmm. because they're you the only thing that gets reimbursed is super high risk populations. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like you know people with uh, high risk mam you know, for for breast cancer genes. Yeah, then that, those you can actually get paid yeah. to triage, and you're looking for something more specific. But, but you know, cancer is random. Eighty five the cancer. As random, there's no gene you can know they're high risk. It happens. It happens for, because, for cancer general. Yeah, cancer has 85 percent of randomness. Mm -hmm. That's currently believing. You know, cancer. How cancer causes open science problem? Now? I don't process no, but in my impression is a lot of randomness there. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is mm -hmm. right now, to the extent that there's reimbursed screening, it's for. It is for the subset of patients that have been identified yes, as yes. high risk. That's because and there you're typically looking for something very specific because they're that high yeah, risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that I think of, in the medicine sense, you need to cover more people. The, the, the best by CDC, the American Cancer Association, 
you need to cover more people. We cannot cover more people because we cannot afford to do that. It's too expensive, right? You're There's no. That the challenge really is to uh -huh. get this cohort study over the specific patient group that you're interested in. Yeah, I want to say for elder people, the on the, the first study but for elder people, elder people for many from yeah, you, you can like uh, you know they do long screening, right? You can. You have ever small so with, for with, too much. Yeah, like, uh, habit and yeah. the but, but, I, but I think the, the, it can be broader. It definitely can be yeah, broader. Because many saying this can be done for everybody. Yeah, everybody. Like every be, year. Because you a lot know, of cancer just really, really yeah, random. See, for example, like yeah, they, they have a recent yeah. news yeah. saying the healthy people mm -hmm. living very healthy life, they eat organic food, they access a lot, they have higher risk of cancer. So because are the places. regenerating is too too quickly, you have more chance to make error. The RNA has more chance to make error, and the RNA produces a lot of bad, bad proteins. It, it, it happens. We don't know. We, we barely know how our body works. We barely know how, how our brain works. This is the fact right now. So this sort of yeah. uh, whole body screen is done now. It's available. No. It's cash pay, and so only rich people. You know, it's like a thousand bucks a year. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's a movie, right? This is a movie, like uh, seeing like uh, the rich people. By Metro Diamond, that was a movie kind of fun. Like the, the rich people living, the poor people living in the earth, and Metro people living on an uh, artificial moon. So they get a screen every morning, then the Metro <laughs> people, you are cancer free, you know, uh, in that way. So, but like, is the cost in like diagnosis right now, or is the cost is actually in the machine, the CT giving the CT scan? It's like 80% is the machinery and the yeah. facility. But the machine can be much cheaper. The machine, the, the, it's really depends on throughput. I think right now, the a machine is getting cheaper. The machine you can actually let's see CT. CT you can scan you can scan a patient zero point eight second. Yeah, they can really it's not the scan time that dominates yeah. the cost. It's you got to get the it's person the and the change person. into their gown. And you need a particle. The room. You need a approved particle with clear risk benefit factors. Yeah, FDA will clear it. FDA will approve that. that. Is there any indication actually shows? This type of medical yeah, you have to do, yeah, do clinical study. You have to do clinical yeah, on so the patient. Yeah, you have to do not, that. Okay. You, you have, have you have really working with a network of, of physicians. Yeah, you engage on doing that to change it, the the undesirable situation we have. So we, have of, we have a lot of housing problems. Yeah, we have a lot of we spend like what how many, how many billion dollars? Like <laughs> two hundred billion dollars more than that, and and it's not that desirable. We we can push more. I think we we can give them that amount of money. We should be the better. I think we should. Um, okay, so I already said that. To show you examples, saying um, this is a easy example of the pancreas it looks like. And uh, I remember I you might well my friend he won the Pascal Seventeen challenge. That was before the year of deep learning. And uh, I invited him to uh, to see our data. And he talked about how the computation hard or something. And then I show him the pancreas. At the time, we don't know how to solve it. And he's, uh, he's shocked. Right? He's saying, oh, there's really no boundary. And, and the, the doctor just hit us in the boundary and ask the machine to segment it. A human can do that. We, I, I even cannot do that. I think neuro already beating my performance. But, but what does what that matter? It's no. I, I want to provide the best matter ever possible to the physicians. So this is just this is a really a easy example. I have many hard examples. Pancreas is, is uh, very important. Why? Because um, uh, you you want to screening pancreatic tumor or pancreatic disease. Sometimes the volume on pancreas is very important. How they change over time. I said no doctor will do that. Even for doctors, it's not easy to segment them. So so they really need a machine to to compute the volume size. I did you don't compute it perfectly well. But the estimation should be reasonably aligned with, uh, correlated with the real volume, right? So you can really um, know um, what they're doing. So, so really, the, the, the appearance is complex. When you look at that image, it's easy, really easy. Pancreas, and how you know this two blob are uh, pancreas, other two are not. Other blob, they're not. So, so if doctor don't, don't know doctor how, how to do that, doctor. how do you teach the machine to do that? Yeah, doctor know that. Don't know that you said don't you don't, don't, even don't know, don't know, cannot oh, see oh, the doctor, no, doctor, of course, don't know, of course, of course, they just don't do it because it's too time consuming. Yeah, Nothing. of course, the doctor is capable of solving what's what. Yeah. The doctor is amazing. I would say at least the best doctor. They are amazing. They they, they were training that way for a reason. Yeah. 
you know, with some time, it was deep learning kind of UMB the two years. So, so what you can't afford is the doctor can't take the time to take a mouse and yes, outline. Yeah, so, 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 uh, I would not always say it's just data problem. Uh, I, I really, really think the, it's not just data. It's, it's it, the it, diversity in care quality across nation. So different regions and different caregivers, they don't have a, a, a consistent care standard across the nation. I think that's the issue, if I understand you correctly. It's a different business. Say, you know, I would say, you know, Facebook and Google, you know, you have a lot of data. You push in you, your company correlations. You used to have 30% correlation, now you have 60. You make a strictly more money, right? You, you, for medicine, 30%, 60% are all trash. It's just trash, there's no use. You have to push to the limits that can be really useful for, for doctors. Then you, you produce a lot of noise, they don't like it. And when you're getting there, I do believe it's not just data. Data, of course, you need to have data. You don't have data, you have nothing to work with, right? You know, we open, to help you really realize that not the beyond data issue. There are many learning, there are many, it's the same if it's only just data issue. We don't need to have a C car anymore, right? We just have these big companies doing all the amazing things. There's no need for academia to exist. It's not just data. It's a lot of research. Omni mean, universe are sometimes are just amazingly stupid. If we put this in the example, the human they do low short learning. They're amazingly better than neural networks. So my daughter, he, she she is. Um, uh, I I do some experiment on her because uh, she was uh, a year and four months old, and I spent a month at home taking care of her. Uh, and, and I study a lot of like uh, <laughs> so she has one dog to train. We have a neighbor. He has a dog. He has one dog. The dog is running around, and she saw the dog. He realized that's a dog. Then the other day, I took her to see her doctors, and uh, there was a painting of a dog. It was only in the back of the dog. And then my doctor said, "Oh, I mean, this is a dog, not a dog." He, he don't. I asked him dog. He can point out that you know he's he's not speaking fully speaking yet. Another thing is like uh, I have a Chinese painting, different Chin uh, Chinese painting with seven birds. The seven birds this is a static seven birds. Uh, another thing is is uh, uh, like a Western painting about a big bird, a really a zoom up a big beautiful bird. The, the type of different kind of bird, <laughs> the Chinese different painting styles. Uh, he, she has only seven examples of twin, and uh, there's no localization. There's a weekly supervised everything. And I, I just tell her there's a bird, and she figured it out. She knows that's the bird. I, I mean, and we have a lot of things. We, we barely know how, how our brain works. Our brain is very powerful. It's the same for certain types of machine already beat human. Not just deep learning, even the SM have beat human. But why why we care? <laughs> so we're close to solve the the uh, we, we have a, a, a new efficient neural network we can solve uh, uh, Okay, we saw like a, not just uh, 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 pancreas sensation, we also saw the, the possibly long sensation. This is also one area we're working on is we really want to generate a, a pixel mask of a, all the different kind of type of infective disease and what the volume they have. That, that the doctors see it, doctors know how severe, doctors give a guess how severe it is, but we want precision medicine. So, and uh, also we, we keep on working on the pancreas, so we have a, the best model actually we, we have is not uh, 3D CN yet, it's a uh, two and a half D CN with a uh, convolutional uh, LSTM kind of smoothing and we get a even better result. But right now we're working on to scale it up. Right now we're working on fully annotated 100 cases. How we can, without a fully segment, without doctor fully segment of the pancreas, how we push it to be 2,000, 1,000 patients, how, how that will indicate maybe even beyond 10,000? How we do that, and this is the next thing. You do things in the wild because that was the thing you want to use your algorithm for. Every, you know, say you build a cloud solution. You you access the cloud API. You do you have no control about what the patient will be used. You want to work for every case, even not for every case, ninety five percent of case, right? So you have to scale up. So and when you scale up, I never train a, a neural network based on the three D shape because pancreas it varies so much a lot from patient to patient. So you have to keep this in mind. So I never do things that will overfit him, that, that will really, we know it will overfit. You don't, just don't, you don't need the data to tell you that it will overfit. You know that it will overfit. Because that's why we need us, right? why we need a human, we make a decision. We, we cannot try all the possibilities. You know, we, we, do, we learn, we train the conversation, so we know what's the best practice to do, what, what's not. And uh, um, pictures.
Um, we spent a lot of time on doing long, but I can cover it in the second talk, and because long long kills four million people a year, and uh, the crash kills one point three million people a year. I don't think we can save all the lung patients. Let's say we save half. That's too many. That's more than people died on the road. <clears throat> so we did. We indeed realize um, the issue is really the the data. Data is one major issue. So um, I'm very happy. You know, we we collaborate together. We push this. Uh, I already got a lot of emails about when, where. You know, I, I think this is also a good thing for to show like Google really be a very good citizenship to support uh, these efforts. I think that's great, and uh, save us four million dollars doing that, and uh, you know, we hire a contractor doing that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, um, and another thing is, I have to, you know, in, in, for IT company, I, this was, you know, for people who don't do deep learning, I need to say the, the good thing about deep learning, how you should work on it. Do you want to hear some key questions, maybe okay. from GVC and, okay. and from the um, audience? So this is from Stanford, I think a lot of people know. It's just saying this, uh, this uh, there should be no full automatic ability without in the next 15 years, which I agree with. I think we have a lot of work to do. And, uh, um, yeah, I can take some questions. questions. The GBC, because yeah. there, there are a lot of people who are at the GBC as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you, you want to reach uh, a, um, a, a status that uh, you can, the intelligence system can triage your mm -hmm. patients yeah. um, before you retire. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. besides, the data, yeah, besides the data <laughs> uh -huh. um, challenge, mm -hmm. what would be the most promising or prioritized uh, sanitation. Um, precision sanitation. medicine? Yeah, I'm I'm saying I'm asking people you to switch the efforts from I think that I haven't made it clear because I talked too much about different uh, diverse topics. Mm -hmm. One thing is we pay attention to the CAD. CAD is what I work on for six years, but right now I'm actually working more on the sanitation. Because I think the segmentation is directly deliverable. That's not human can do, and human need that. So we do things human need, and they cannot do it. So, so segmentation as an assistive tool for yes, same thing doctors as a to, yes, as to a triage the patients. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would not be triage. Triage is a different story. Triage is mm -hmm. really, we shouldn't do triage with not human involved. Okay. For human, human need more precision biomarkers. Mm -hmm. They need a, they need a less gassing, more work. Mm -hmm. Right now, they do a lot of gas, right? Mm -hmm. Why is this um, patient you need to go to uh, famous hospital? Because it gets better. Yeah, then, then <laughs> it gets back to my original mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. For the triage yeah. process, yeah, yeah. what do we need to do as a field to make that a real risk before you retire? I think the, I think the chest array is the one good example we should still continue working on it. I think chest array is. A, you along the direction. Uh, you know, I'm, I have to think about what we do. We have to plan something right along the line. But yes, yeah, so I, I would say maybe one third, really like a little bit one third, a little bit more than one third of effort spending on uh, deliver precision biomarkers, sequencing based, parsing based, to PAX vendors, to hospitals. To the uh, many cancer hospitals, uh, they need that. We have to figure out what they need, right? Like uh, I have, you know, we have uh, something about uh, the we can develop a new biomarker about the uh, lung nodule. It, it doesn't work out, but it's something along the line. So, so there is a because there are no people doing that because it's too hard. Nobody think that can be done. Right now, actually, we make the tremendous progress in that. I mean, really, that's the area you can acquire, you can harvest the, the, the sanitation progress and turn that into clinical attributes, useful attributes. I, I, I think that's one, and that's, that's no kind question of question I want to sort of add uh -huh. on. So in precision medicine, uh -huh. so purely people would think Longitudinal, so the data is actually, the fragmentation of the data is actually very bad for precision mm -hmm. medicine step. So essentially, if you want to derive precise phenotype, we want to have like a per patient mm -hmm. sort of medical history over a long time. That's yeah. what we do longitudinal analysis. Mm -hmm. And then we want all the data to be here. Yeah. And then here I want to understand, so here we talk about radiology, mm -hmm. medical imaging. Mm -hmm. Medical imaging is one source of data and yes. hopefully we'll be able to collect it over a long period of time like what we see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the question for me is, 
how this actually, how the medical imaging biomarker mm -hmm. is actually work with, let's say, the electronic medical record derived mm -hmm. phenotype, how they actually work together. So, um, and how we validate the biomarker, so to say, let's just compare the image-based mm -hmm. evidence, mm -hmm. um, how this biomarker is sort of validated mm -hmm. and then sort of in combination with other biomarkers. So you, have, you have to design clinical study. You have to, that's the only way. I see that. That's what I'm curious yeah, about. So but, but you, you have to design saying, a protocol to design yeah. a trial. But right now, saying I feel we have we don't have that yet. How we can design the protocol? I see. So uh, uh, can I interpret so that need, means uh -huh. if we don't have a protocol to actually do that, the biomarker we see today mm -hmm. from medical imaging study mm -hmm. is just a hint for um, precision medicine instead of a, a hard. Uh, yeah, so that, there's no way we can validate yeah, it at this point, right? But you have to. You have to. You have to. Um, do something which was not possible, then you put it possibly into a possible protocols. So that's the reason you have to do, you have to talk with doctors, you have to, uh, you know, they have many, many years of insights. This is why you have to work with the medical physicians and, and they actually know what they need. Yeah. They actually, they have a strong insights about what will be useful for future protocol. Gotcha. You, you work with them. So you, I don't know, I have, I have no training. You, you, I work in the hospital for, well, for you, I don't know this. Uh, this is why you really need to work with doctors. You need to really empower them. And you need to work, you need to find the visionary doctors. They think beyond their just daily work. Yeah, they, they, they have a wish list. They do. Believe me, they do have a wish list. And, and of course, you need to find the real doctor. And you need to satisfy, you need to know what the wish list is reasonable, is meaningful, will be impactful. Then you have to, to get it done. Yeah, just you, you have the doctor know, the wrong knows. Many other things, and other doctors. You know, we, we fortunately we have really the world's best doctors, and they are visionary. Their job is not just treating patient today; they're finding innovative ways of treating patient today, and even for tomorrow. So, so this is really a, a very nice, unique setup at the edge, you know, to do things, to conduct this kind of meaningful work. I, I, yeah, I, I get it. I learn from the doctors. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it's I, a long way. You need communication. You need interaction. It's better to be daily communication in that sense. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.